In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with Snowflake using Snow SQL or Snow SQL. And the first thing you want to do on a Mac is if you're using Homebrew, you want to install the software. And that's just brew install double dash cask snowflake dash snow SQL. So if we run that command, I've already installed it. So it's going to give me that message there. So the next step is to simply log in. And the way that's done, is with the uh, Snow SQL command as follows. So I have to give it the cloud provider and the location or the region and then my ID for my account and my username in order to log in. So let's go ahead and log in. I get an error about uh, logging, but that's okay. and now I'm logged in. So after you've logged in, the first thing to do is, is to create Snowflake objects. So we're gonna set up a database and a table, um, and we're going to set up a virtual warehouse which sets up the compute resources to perform the tasks of creating a database and a table. So we are going to first uh, create the database. So we'll create or replace database, and you can see it's auto-completing for me. This is the tutorial database. So we just created the, the tutorial database. And then we're gonna select, notice that all I have to do is down arrow and then space, current database, and current schema. I want to go back to the end of the line here and add my open and close paren. And you can see they're in use for the current session. So we can view it using this context function to just uh, select current database and current schema. We don't need to create a schema in the database because each database created in Snowflake contains a default schema named public. So we're just printing that to screen basically. So now we're going to create a table, create or replace table, give it a name. Um, and start adding in the various uh, rows. We actually want to separate this. And we don't have to select what's popped up there. So we're just gonna create a basic uh, table. Start date's actually date, and then we'll close it off. Okay, so we created the table, and the number of columns in the table, the positions, and the data types correspond to the fields in the sample CSV files that we're going to load in on the next step here. So now we're going to create a virtual warehouse. So we're going to create an extra small warehouse using the create warehouse command. So we will create or replace warehouse, give it a name with warehouse size is extra small. I believe this needs to be capitalized, but I'm not sure. Auto suspend after 180. Uh, seconds I believe or maybe that's minutes I'm not entirely sure auto resume is set to true and it's initially suspended is also set to true so we just created that warehouse 
So it's going to automatically start running when I execute the first SQL command that requires compute resources. And the warehouse is now in use for my current session and I can view that by saying select <coughs> current warehouse. <coughs> open close paren semicolon. So that's my current warehouse. So now let's stage, <coughs> excuse me, the data files. So we're gonna, I've already downloaded some, uh, some files here, but we're going to put them, we're gonna upload local data files into the, to the table stage provided for that table that we created. So uh, the way we do that is with a put command. So we'll say put colon, put file colon slash 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 temp because I put it in there. Employees zero star dot csv. Um, that's going to uh, wildcard all of the csv files in temp, and we're going to put it at um, whoops uh, so we're going to that's the employee basic is the table that I created so File specifies the full directory path and names of the files on my local machine, and I'm putting wildcards in there. And then namespace and table name, so at namespace dot percent table name is, is the, the rest of that, and that indicates uh, to use the stage for the specified table, and in this case it's employee basic. So we're going to go ahead and load those. And you can see that uh, five files were loaded, gives me a source size and a target size because it is compressed on the target, not on the source. And I've got those five files status is uploaded. If I wanted to list those stage files, I would list like this. <coughs> so now I've just listed those five files. So the next thing we're going to do is copy data into the target table. So we're going to copy into from um, percent employee basic file format is uh, type CSV field optionally enclosed by um, we're going to put uh, double quotes here. Pattern equals um, star employee employees zero and then one through five because we had five files there. Dot csv dot gz and then on air just skip the file. There we go, all of the uh, files are now loaded in. Five rows, no errors, <clears throat> and now we can query that data. So let's just select star from employee basic. Semicolon. And there it is. First name, last name, email, street address, city, start date. So let's insert into. So if we insert into employee basic values, uh, let's say first name Joe Give just fake names here, fake values, fake emails, J Smith at google.com uh, give a fake address 134 dry gulch and fake city um, south bend and fake start date of 2017-01-01 start on new year's day and close it out Uh, let's see, values. Got a little typo there. 
Okay, so I just uh, inserted a row. So we're going to query now based on like. So let's select email from employee basic where email like and then we fill it out. So we'll say percent um, Google percent. And you can see that's the email column from that row. So if we want to select everything for that record, we would switch this to star. And you can see what I just uh, added there. So um, that's basically it. So we basically uh, loaded some data. We staged the files containing the data to be loaded. We copied the data from the stage files into a target table. And we had a running active warehouse that, was, that we set up. And we had an existing table into which the data from the files were loaded. And we had the CSV files. Um, and there were new line characters in the records and the fields were comma separated. So it was a comma separated uh, value file. And that's essentially it. So now let's go ahead and drop it. So drop database if exists, and of course it does exist. And then let's also drop warehouse. And now we're back to the beginning. So you can see we have no warehouse, no database. Up here we had a warehouse with no database. And then up here we have a warehouse and a database. So that's kind of how that works. Hope you found this helpful. Basically, we're just following the Snowflake documentation, getting started with uh, SnowSQL. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Hope you enjoy using Snowflake. And let me know how it's going in the comments section. Thanks for watching.